Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing a quick vegetarian slash vegan meal. I'm going to be sharing my recipe for some fried squash or stewed squash. Now this is going to be utilizing the large green garden squash that a lot of us Caribbean people love to cook with. Um, if you didn't have this on hand, of course you could use zucchini. But this is what I have on hand today because Auntie Chandra picked a fresh one just from her garden. So she wanted me to use it in a video. So thanks Auntie Chandra, big up to you. We're going to put this quick and simple dish together and I'm going to show you guys how. Now the first step when making this dish is to work on the main star of the show. So I have my garden squash here, I chopped off the ends, and I'm just chopping it into really, really thick slices. The reason why you want to do this is this way it's easier for you to peel and easier for you to cut. Now I want to leave a big disclaimer for you guys. This squash right here has a very tough skin and it is very hard to get through sometimes. If you're inexperienced in the kitchen or inexperienced with a knife, be very careful or get somebody in the kitchen who knows how to use a knife properly because this can really hurt you badly if you do not cut it the right way and that knife slips. But basically once you get it into pretty big slices like I did, you're going to go ahead and take a knife and start to trim off that skin. The reason why I'm chopping it on this board and not cutting it in my hand is because the skin is very very tough as I just found out. So just go ahead take a nice sharp serrated knife like I'm doing and cut it all around and get that thick green skin off. You have to get all of it off and it might look like I'm cutting off too much but I'm really not because if you don't cut off all of it, what happens is you'll have these very fibrous pieces in the squash as it's cooking and it will never melt down. So just go ahead and be cautious of that, peel every piece of your squash and then I'll show you guys what to do next. And once you peel that piece of squash and you go ahead and cut it in half, you're going to go in with your fingers and dig out all of those seeds. Now I find that this is the best way to go ahead and get rid of the seeds just because your fingers really get in there and all of the nooks and crannies to get them out. Now, you cannot cook these seeds in the squash. If you were to cook them, the squash would take forever to boil because the seeds are very, very, very hard. So I recommend just taking them out and saving yourself a lot of trouble when you go to cook it. So it might look like I'm making a mess here, but honestly, no pain, no gain here. You gotta get all those seeds out and then we can cook this properly. So I'm gonna continue doing this with all of my other slices of squash. I'm gonna peel them, cut them in half, dig out all the seeds, and I'll show you what to do next. And I wanted to just let you guys know that as you're cleaning this squash and you're peeling it and you're cutting it up, you're going to realize that there is a lot of waste um, created by the squash just because it has a very tough skin and a thick skin. So even though you think you might be wasting a lot of the squash, just know that that meat on the inside is going to be really nice and sweet. And when it cooks down, it's just going to be super, super delicious. So trust me, it is worth all of the work. It is worth the little bit of mess that you're going to make in your kitchen. Just go ahead and give it a try. And I know you guys are going to really enjoy this. So I finished peeling and removing all of the seeds from all of my pieces of squash. And what I'm basically doing is taking one of the pieces, flattening it down onto my board and dicing it up really well. So basically I'm cutting it along the horizontal axis and then I am going to cut it vertically as well. So this way I can get nice chunks like that. And I'm going to continue doing this with all of the pieces of my squash until I get it all chipped up or cut up. Now, if you wanted to cut it bigger, feel free to do so. And if you wanted it to be even smaller, feel free to do so as well. Make sure you tailor this dish to your own taste and your own preferences. I finished getting all of my squash chopped up and I have it in a bowl soaking with some water. And at this point, I'm going to show you guys the other ingredients I'm using. I have some sliced onions, chopped cherry tomatoes, hot pepper that I've chopped, some cilantro as well as some garlic. If you had some green seasoning on hand, you could use it. And if you had regular tomatoes versus cherry tomatoes, you can use that as well. So we're going to start off in a non-stick pan. I'm using non-stick today because I really enjoy this pan that my aunt has in her kitchen. If you wanted to use any type of heavy bottom pot though, feel free to do so. And I'm going in with some mild tasting olive oil. Now, if you wanted to use any type of oil, feel free to do so. But once that oil is nice and hot, you're going to go in with your chopped garlic, your chopped hot pepper, and you're going to stir that around just a little bit so this way it can perfume the oil. Now, honestly, if you are afraid that your garlic and your pepper is going to burn before you add everything else in, then you can go ahead and add this in after the onions, but I really like to add them in before the onions so this way it starts to perfume that oil just a little bit. So once I fry those up for just about 10 seconds as you saw there, I'm going in with the onions on top. I'm going to continue stirring these around for maybe one to two minutes until the onions have softened up just a little bit. So just reminding you guys, I have the onions and the garlic and pepper on a medium to medium high heat. Make sure you keep that heat regulated so you don't burn anything. And at this point, once the onions get a little softened up after about two minutes, you're gonna go in with your chopped tomatoes. I'm using cherry tomatoes today just because that's what Auntie Kenita had in her garden. So we picked those and threw them in. And honestly, you guys, the taste is amazing because they were so fresh. 
and I'm also going to go in with some chopped scallions. And once you add those fresh ingredients into the pan, you're going to go ahead and stir it up really well and you're going to lower the heat to exactly medium heat and you're going to cover it and allow those tomatoes to stew or cook down really well. After about two minutes, you're going to notice that the onions take on more of a golden color. You're also going to notice that your tomatoes have started to melt down really, really well. So at this point, I'm going to go in with some tomato paste. Now the tomato paste for all of you guys is optional. I know some people when they make their stewed squash or their fried squash, they do not like it too red and too tomato-y. But in all honesty, I really like the tomato flavor running all throughout. That's why I use fresh tomatoes and the tomato paste. And once you add the tomato paste in, you want to keep on stirring it until it's all dissolved throughout the entire mixture with all the fresh seasonings. And once it's dissolved inside, you're going to go in with a little sprinkling of garam masala or homemade masala. Now I like to add this in just because it adds just a nice note of flavor to the dish. And when people try the dish, they're going to be wondering what it is in there that you add in. Once all of those fresh seasonings and the spices have had a chance to toast and cook really well, you're going to go in with your squash. At this point, I'm raising my heat back to a medium, medium high heat. The reason being is because when I add the squash in, it's going to start to release a lot of water and I want that water to burn off. So I'm going to add all the squash in, being careful to drain off all of the water that it was soaking in because it has a high water content as it is. And as soon as you add in the squash, you're also going to go on top with the chopped cilantro. Now I like to chop extra cilantro or whatever herbs I'm using so this way I can save some and put some on at the end. But you also want some to cook within the dish so this way it can flavor and perfume that entire dish. And at this point, I'm going to go on with my salt. I'm using salt to taste as usual. And once you add in that salt, you're also going to go in with some black pepper. And once you go in with that black pepper, you are also going to go in with some garlic powder. Now once you add all of those spices in, you're going to go ahead and stir everything up. And I'm going to allow it to cook or fry up or saute until that squash releases all of its juices and it begins to stew in its own liquids. After my squash had released its liquids, I went ahead and I covered it just because I wanted it to start to stew and cook down really well. So as you guys can see, this is what it looks like after about 10 to 15 minutes of cooking. It's cooked down really well and as you guys can see, it does need a little while longer just because the pieces are still pretty big and I want some more of that liquid to burn down. But we're getting there. So it's been about 20 minutes from start to finish and as you guys can see, it only has a little bit of liquid at this point. The squash has melted down really well and I'm going in with some more chopped scallion so this way I could just finish it off with some fresh flavor. I'm going to stir it in really well and then it is ready to serve. So that's it guys. I told you guys it would be a very quick vegetarian meal and a quick dish to put together. So here is my fried or stewed squash alongside my hot oil roti. Now obviously if you just watched this video you found out how to put together this fried squash and of course if you want to know how to make the perfect oil roti you're going to want to go ahead and check the recipe out I have on my channel. I'll have it linked right up here in the right hand corner. If you enjoyed this video today, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you are not subscribed yet and join the Matthews Daniels Cooking family and leave your comments down below. 